And this is far more difficult to cultivate than just acts of non-injury. Because if you think about it, it is impossible to exist without causing injury to someone, some creature, at some time in your life. So it's impossible to live. But what is possible is to cultivate a non-injurious attitude at all times. Ahimsa is both at the physical and mental level. Physically, you're harmless. You don't speak harmful words and actions that cause injury. Of course, you don't do. But you realize that in spite of your best efforts, you may cause injury, and sometimes you may have to cause injury. Like Shakespeare said, you may need to be cruel, only to be kind. So this attitude of ahimsa is more important. Never wanting to hurt anyone in thought, word, or deed. And this comes from this sense of oneness. The moment you feel one with people, you don't want to injure them, but there are times when you need to be perhaps firm, sometimes harsh, to protect them from further injury. Like a typical example is a parent with a child. When the child is up to mischief and the child does not uh, indulges in wayward uh, behavior, there are times when the parent needs to come down sharply on the child, not because the parent wants to injure the child or harm the child or hurt the child, but only to prevent the child from being subject to much greater hurt and harm later on in life. So even in that act of pulling up the child, it is non-injurious, it is ahimsa. Therefore it is that if you look at all the gods and goddesses, including goddesses, in the Hindu pantheon, they all have a weapon. Rama always was never seen without a bow and arrow. And even when his own brother Bharata, you know, when he was banished to um, 14 years of Vanvas, he was camped there. He went willingly. And when Bharat came back, he was not there when all of this happened. And he learned that his mother, Kaikeyi, was instrumental in sending Ram to Vanvas. He was infuriated. And he spoke words to his mother. He says, you are my greatest enemy, etc., etc. And then he set out. He set out to meet Ram and bring him back and said, I will not take this kingdom. It is yours. When Ram heard that Bharat was coming, he wasn't sure why Bharat was coming. It could be that Bharat was coming to finish him off good and proper. So he was well prepared for any eventuality. It's not that he expected this of him, but in his position, he had to be well prepared. And then he met Bharat with the bow and arrow in full readiness for battle. But when Bharat came and met him, and he said, you have to come back. Ram said, you all know the story. He said, no, I, it is my bounden duty to my father to fulfill his obligation. And therefore, I have to be here for 14 years. It is your lot that you have to go and rule. Please go and rule. With my permission, you can rule. And that was the time when Bharat took the momentous decision that I will not sit on the throne and rule. But I will, he asked for Ram's padukas, shoes, that he might keep the padukas on the throne and rule representing Ram, not as the king himself. What a fine thought. Now the point here is that all the gods and goddesses had weapons, but they never used the weapons for destruction. They used the weapons to uphold righteousness. In this day and age, when unrighteousness comes up periodically, the problem with the good people is that they are not battle ready. They are not ready to, to assert their goodness. And unless you assert the goodness, your goodness is of no use. You have to have the courage and the conviction and the inner strength 
to make sure that righteousness prevails under any circumstance to the extent that it is your obligation. I'm not saying go out and fight other people's battles, but to the extent that you have to do it. So this is all under the banner of Ahimsa. Next quality, number 11, is Satyam, truth. Truth simply means following your own conscience. Just as the mariner's compass always points north, your conscience always points towards the higher. Even in a negative person, a terrorist, there is something within him that tells him what is right and what is wrong. And at any time, if he decides to follow his conscience, he is following truth. That's why Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. Next quality, a crodha free from anger. Desire is the root of anger. So if you root out desire, you are free from anger. Thirteen, tyaga, renunciation. Renunciation is not renunciation of activities. It is performance of obligatory duty, renouncing attachment and anxiety for the fruit. So you renounce the worry over the past and renounce anxiety for the fruit. When you do all this, you will be shanta. So the 14th quality is tranquility. There are two ways of interpreting this. The absolute sense, as long as you have a desire, you will not be in peace, you'll be in agitation. So you need to root out all desires, then you will reach absolute bliss. But relatively, when desires are playing up in your system, if you use your intellect to guide, to redirect the desire, to make sure that that desire is analyzed and put in its place properly. If you do all of that, you will be in relative peace. Quality number 15, apaishanam, not speaking or thinking ill of anyone, focusing on self-development. Absence of slander is a wonderful quality. If you meet someone, you know, I would strongly recommend that you try at least one day in your life, one day of the week when you say, I will not think or speak ill of anybody. First of all, you won't achieve it. But if you do, <laughs> see, even if you make up your mind, I will not speak ill of someone, some friend rings up first thing in the morning and says, you know what happened? And finished, gone. <laughs> Apaishuna. You will not speak or think ill of others when you're focused on, your, on removal of your own faults. Daya Bhuteshu, compassion for all beings. This is not a weakness, this is a strength. Uh, it is not weak pity, it is compassion for being. So you see, you understand that everybody gets what he or she deserves, the law of karma functions. So if someone is suffering, it's because of his karma. But you don't sit there and say you deserved it and you got it. Even when you know that the person is going through suffering or, suffering or misery because of his own karma, you give of your best to help the person's, uh, to try and alleviate the person's suffering. Aloluptvam, wonderful quality, non-covetousness. See, the, all of us are just the opposite. When you go to a party, you see someone wearing a fabulous dress, you say, oh, how nice it is. You know what it means? I wish I had that. You see somebody's uh, a diamond ring and say, oh, beautiful ring. You're saying beautiful ring, but your face conveys, I want it. Covetousness, you, you, we are always coveting somebody else's wealth. Non-covetousness is a wonderful quality. It comes from a sense of self-sufficiency. or It comes from a sense of abundance. Mardavam, gentleness, it's a beautiful quality to have. It is said, Mrudunam Darunam Hanti, it, gentleness, when you lose your gentleness, that's when the problem starts. So je the gentle conquer the fears. The quality of this gentleness, it's a very subtle quality. And this is a strength because you're able to conquer all other negative forces through this one quality. 19, re-modesty. Modesty comes from self-assessment. When you know who you are, you're not disturbed by what other people say about you. 
and absence of fickleness. A chapalam, when you have a clear goal, you're consistent in the pursuit of that goal and every action you're concentrating on. The last thing that we want to do is, what are your take home points? Number one, you are the master of your destiny, so therefore watch your thoughts. Thoughts are what build your destiny. How do you go about changing it? Identify your problem areas. All of us have one or two areas where it is uh, letting out a lot of agitation. Change your attitude towards that. Look afresh at that situation. Change your outlook and cultivate divine qualities. Now friends, this brings us to the end of today's session.